Since I'm alone in the lab and bored out of my mind, I figured, why not explain what I've been up to this weekend and what's coming up this week? So here's a quick sneak peek for your Science Sunday. Okay, I apologize. That was terrifying. Anyway, back to the science. So as I've mentioned before, in my lab, I work with a virus that's spread by mosquitoes called chikungunya. That's such a fun word to say. You try it. Tell me it's not fun to say. Chikungunya. Right. And back to the science, shall we? So I can't actually work with the virus itself in our lab because the government says that it's too dangerous. So to get around that, we use something called the pseudovirus system. So with the pseudovirus system, essentially I can make a fake form of the virus that's safe for us to study here in the lab. And that's what I've been up to this weekend. So in order to make a fake virus, you first have to start with the virus's DNA. Now since I'm going to want to make a lot of fake viruses to study, I'm going to need a lot of DNA. And I can get this through a system that we call transformation. So for my transformation, I put my virus's DNA into a bacteria called E. coli. I let the E. coli grow up overnight in something that we call a shaking incubator. It looks something like this. The incubator provides the E. coli with the perfect conditions that it wants to grow at what we call optimal performance. Under these optimal conditions, the E. coli will divide from one cell into two, and two into four, and four into eight, and so on and so forth, about once every 30 minutes. That means that if I were to start with just one E. coli cell, in 12 hours, that one cell could turn into nearly 1.7 million more cells. Wow. So when I put my viral DNA into the E. coli, the E. coli becomes like a super copier for my virus DNA, giving me billions of copies to work with the next day. Now the only problem is I have to be able to get my viral DNA back out of those E. coli cells. And that's where the DNA extraction kit comes in handy. Now it may say six minute mini prep, but when you have 70 preps to do, that turns into like seven hours worth of DNA extraction. <sighs> and finally, by the end of those seven hours, you go from this to this. And all of that work is just to get about 500 microliters, or half of a milliliter, of my virus's DNA. So once we've collected our DNA, the next step is to figure out how much of it we actually got out. In order to do this, we use a pretty cool scientific tool known as a spectrophotometer. The type of spectrophotometer that we'll use tonight is known as the nanodrop. The nanodrop uses light to measure how much DNA I have floating around in my sample. Now that I've measured out how much DNA is in each sample, I can use that to calculate how much of each I'll need in order to make an equal amount of virus. The next step for making a pseudovirus is to take the copies of DNA that we just made and place them into another cell type. So we use the bacterial cell E. coli to make our copies of DNA. Now we're going to use a kind of kidney cell to actually read our DNA and make the proteins it codes for. Once our kidney cells start expressing our virus as proteins, will then infect those cells with a non-dangerous virus known as VSV. When the non-dangerous VSV buds from the kidney cells, it'll take with it our viral proteins that were being expressed. What we end up with is something that looks like chikungunya from the outside, but is really just a harmless VSV virus inside. And that's why we call it the pseudovirus, or fake virus. Because on the outside, it may look like something dangerous, but inside, it's not the real virus. Well, hopefully you learned something. I now get to go and make 25 plates worth of kidney cells so that tomorrow I can start making some pseudovirus. Well, until next time, I guess I'll see you here and there until May when we start back up with Science with Kenan. Till then, have a happy Science Sunday.